Recording in progress. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new edition of Graveyard Talk. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, how apropos for this band that right now I've got a major line of thunderstorms coming through the area right now. So if I blot out, the talented one of the two of us will take over, and that's our brand new co-host, Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to, I, I, you know. As you can tell, the, the guys like that better, too, because uh, you're much easier to look like the, look at than this old fart here. So, you know. Hey, look, I do my best. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, well, that's the sad part. I do my best, and I still look like this. It's sad. It's really, truly sad, you know. So, anyway, um, one of the guys I've, I've already spoken to and, and thoroughly enjoy, and, and to another band, but we're not going to talk about them today, but uh, DJ Luther and uh, Cameron Ockton are with us from... Village in Vain, a great name for a band. Hi guys, how are you? How's it going? What's up? Hey, thanks for taking some time out. I know you guys are really busy, but uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that's coming up in your lives that's that's humongous, and uh, and we'll get to that in a few and all. But let let let's just go right on ahead in here. Uh, why the name Villains in Vain? Honestly, it wasn't even like our first choice. It was oh. like millions and millions and millions and millions of other choices. Right. And I don't even remember like how it happened. So I think vain was the first word that popped in our head. I mean, like, well, vain's kind of cool, but you need something dark. And I think we threw like just any alliteration. Yeah. And became <laughs> villains in vain. Yeah, vanity. We were playing. We, uh, Everything in this band was very like, um, I mean, like we can talk about just like the whole origin story of it, but it was very iterative process where like the first step was just getting out something to attract the rest of the band. And like, we couldn't just release nothing. We needed to have a band name behind it. And right. so we had, we had a thing that we wanted to put on YouTube to mm -hmm. attract other people on Craigslist or band mix or otherwise, mm -hmm. but we needed a name. You gotta have a name. And so we're, we're, we had, we had like a notebook and we were trying to draw like cool, like we were seriously thinking about like the monogram before we even had a band name. Like, what do we want that to look like? And, <laughs> nice. You know, nice. So, so then, so then like a V came up, something about, um, there, we had like a mental, uh, mental, uh, uh, uh mind trap kind of name for a minute where mm -hmm. we're like, you're stuck in your mind or you're a prisoner of your own mind. Or we had like all these ideas we were kicking around and, um, yeah, and then we were starting to use. I, I have, I still have a Latin keyboard, yeah. or it's like a Greek, a Greek letters on my phone. Where we were like, do we want to drop in like that, the A that doesn't have the cross hash through the A? It's like I don't know what that Greek letter is. It's like sure. you know Alpha or something, but a capital Alpha. But mm -hmm. like, you know, we we played with all these different ideas of having different, you know, sort of emblems and symbols in the name, and then I don't know, Villains in Vain was just the best name that we came up with. And you know, like, I, the thing I love about it, it kind of, like, taken, like, its own, like, form, like, the more that we, like, started writing with the idea of Villains in Vain, like, it got a little darker, it got a little scarier, but still got, like, fun, and, like, you know, it could definitely kind of made me, like, think of a lot of the bands that I'm inspired by, I could, like, I can embrace that a little more, so I, like, wearing more makeup and just be a little bit more, you know, just darker, a little bit more angry and just really accepting, like, you know what, if I'm going to be the enemy, I'm going to fucking wear it yeah. there you go we, we, that's the we, spirit we had all these these talks with people not to just stay on the band name for too long but like what the hell is a villain in vain and we were like you know sort of having to explain where we went with it and like it now it's like you know you look at the album cover the the perfect city built to burn cover and there's this like person who is whether or not it helps them whether or not it's in their best interest burning down the world around them you know mm -hmm. and it's like you are just like behaving in vain, right? Regardless of your own uh, motivations. And so, right. you know, a villain in vain is like the Joker of DC, you yeah. know, and like, you know, so we, we kind of had all these sorts of, um, yeah, just to kind of, it, it took on a life after we kind of got the alliteration and stuff. Hey. I would honestly yeah. say the fact that someone had a problem with the band name just shows you right away that you did the right thing. Cause it sounds like, they're like, well, how come we didn't think of that? That sounds pretty good. That's exactly how I would take it. Because yeah. I try to take people's negative. I get a lot of it, especially, believe it or not, it's it's not the men I got a problem with. It's other women that just kind of try to tear you down when you're doing anything. And I just take all that negative. And I'm like, eh, you're just mad because I did it first. There well, you it's go. Nice, it's nice to have something that's worth talking about in like that, mm -hmm. that realm. You know, you don't exactly. Want just, like, you like the old adage is, um, 
the, the more people talk about you, the better, the more chances, the odds are you're going to get out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you want I mean, it to be worth it. I mean, fans before that have you're had famous. bad publicity actually skyrocketed. I mean, look at look at bands like Twisted Sister. They got thrown into congressional, you know, the, the, the Supreme Court and mm -hmm. their shit went up. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in, in, in any negativity or positive is still good. As long as you're getting your name out there, that's what you want to do. And, and all this. Yeah. no such thing as bad publicity, you know, so. But I love the name of the band. I, I think it's terrific. And I found doing this show that a lot of bands, I, I agree with, that they think it's harder actually to come up with a name for a band than writing lyrics for songs. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. you're yeah. like, wow, we've got all the music. What, what the heck are we? Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, yeah. it's tough. Yeah, it really is. Um, and I know you guys got together during the, uh, the the wonderful COVID pandemic and all like that. And, and so some good did come out of the pandemic. You know, thank God for, God for that. But uh, I, I, I got to talk about the song that basically brought this band together and, and what a ballsy move to do this song, but <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I, you could like give me a hundred guesses. I would have never guessed uh, a cover of seals kiss from a rose. Yeah. I, I was like, what a ballsy, ballsy move. I love that. Why? Ten, yeah. Ten, 10 billion songs out there. And you pick that one. Why that song? You hear that song once, it's in your head all day. Yeah, <laughs> it is the catchiest song. Uh -huh. Everyone here just go, baby, <laughs> the it's, it's, everyone sings it. Everyone loves it. All right. And we were just like, we got the discussion because before we did Kiss from Rose, we had a couple songs like that we were working on and writing, but we're, we're like, well, we need to do something that we can put out there with something we can eat, do easy. It's like, well, if we do a cover and we were like, just going through songs and like songs, pop songs, rock songs, just something that we make a video for, something that we mm -hmm. super easily, and then we, and I'm like, Kiss from Rose. Yep. It's gotta be Kiss from Rose, because I always say, if you got a song stuck in your head, you right. Kiss from Rose. Right. Now you got Kiss from Rose stuck in your head, and I'm fine. Yeah, we had, so, yeah, he's right, we had, like, two songs written, and it was just he and I at this point, mm -hmm. and uh, we needed, like I said earlier in the band name conversation, we needed to attract other members, yeah. and we were like, we don't want to put our original music out there, because what we'd really prefer is for our next members to put their their thumbprint on those, like, I want to, we want to get the bass player on it, we want to get the drummer to rewrite the drums that we had in mind, and, you know, like, we wanted all of those elements so we didn't want to release original material that would be then set in stone. So we chose mm -hmm. to do a cover and it right. had the same sort of flavor where like we wanted something that we could do heavy, but it was also kind of, you know, uh, something light. And, you know, I, we had these bell kind of elements in the song that were coming up in other songs we were already mm -hmm. working on. And then, you know, we just thought, what's the thing we could do that's like kind of sweet, kind of sour, you know? And, and that, that song definitely stuck out amongst our, our search. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny because we did, we did the entire video we record mm -hmm. the entire song. We still don't have a band name. Yeah. We didn't have a band name. <laughs> we didn't have a band name. I love it. Until it was like ready to be downloaded onto YouTube. Dude. Yeah. And then we like had his buddy draw up the logo and make the cover art for it. It's like that came all together before the band name. I there forget you go. that. I forget those details because at the time Netflix was about to release um, this like thunder force movie that had like melissa mccarthy i think was starring in it and mm -hmm. and there's a scene in the preview where it's like it's coming soon on you know you're seeing this like ad on netflix for it and it was gonna drop on 420 two years ago to the day mm -hmm. and that at the end of that that preview it has you know them singing da -da 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 -da. and i was like oh fuck dude we have this song we need a band name so oh yeah. i don't know if i can curse on your show i'm sorry there you can we say anything on this great. show great fuck. so, so we're grown so ups we yeah we're gross we can handle it here i'll cool. break it right now ready <laughs> fuck okay <laughs> shit okay <laughs> Done. Right. Hey, right. trust me dj knows there's no professionalism here you he's already it. been through this all right well so to close the loop on that, we were we were in a, a serious haste yeah. to get the song out because I wanted it to seem like we weren't. I wanted two things. I didn't want it to seem like we were copying the Thunder Force, you know, wave of the song, right? Mm -hmm, like they mm -hmm. brought it into this new, they licensed it in a new motion picture, and so it was like maybe that's what brought it to us. And it's like fuck, we had our own idea about this, yeah. and so we're gonna look like 
we're just, you know, riding that coattail. And then the second was we wanted to optimize that song for the search engine optimization. Like we knew people were going to want to listen to Seal's Kiss from a Rose and we right. wanted to be the, the second thing that comes up when people search. And so like overnight that song got like 4,000 plays or whatever. It was, nice. you know, we were, we were and for good reason, it sounds amazing. You guys did a great job on that cover. Oh, I wasn't you. expecting it. When I went through your stuff to do my research for this interview with you guys, because I had never heard of you, um, because I, I am just getting, I'm just getting involved in some underground bands and stuff like that. So when he told me we were interviewing you, I did a lot of research and did my homework. And when I saw that you guys had covered that one, I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> and then when I listened to it, I was like, okay. I like this one better. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think it's a good move by you guys to, to have that name because, yeah. um, you know, Kiss from a Rose by a couple of guys. Nah, that doesn't work. You know, it Those needs dudes. To have a, yeah, you know, two, two cool dudes. Here we are. You know, so uh, I love it. To be uh, fair, two cool dudes, I would probably, I would want to meet the two cool dudes, man. I would. <laughs> hey, what's up? We're the two cool dudes. Two cool dudes here. What's up? I'm We're the little first fan. Yeah. I see. There's, right, there's the problem. Seal, uh, Seal tried to be here. He couldn't make it though. <laughs> he was busy. And unless that song is so fun to play live. Like I used yeah. when we first started playing shows, uh -huh. like, play it live because we were just kind of still wrapped up the EP and just had a couple songs. Right. We stopped playing it live, and then we started playing it live again. I'm like, oh, I forget how much people just love this song. There you go. I, yeah, because I wanted to ask you, what was the, uh, the audience's reaction to, to they're this? They're always like, oh, they're doing it. They're, yeah. that's, that's the song. And we're like, yeah, <laughs> nice. get, get ready. Yeah. I would rage, love to have seen us. that. Some hardcore metal dudes covered in tats. Got their ears gauged out, just swaying back and forth to Kiss of a Rose. Love it. <laughs> well, so, so the first thing, like, yeah, most people who play music are fans of a lot of music, right? And so, uh, yeah, like a lot of people have very eclectic tastes and people really do listen to like, um, you know, softer music like that all the time. But you do run into some people who uh, they hate on it, right? They're, they're like so machismo about metal, just like, no, nah, that ain't metal. Metal is just grindcore and breeze and nothing else. And occasionally, you know, you go and play a show and they go, uh, you know, go, hey, how long can you play tonight? It's like, oh, we could play this long, or we could add our cover and then through that. And they're like, don't, don't play that. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then at one of our recent shows, uh, a friend of ours was like, oh yeah, we're gonna cover uh, "I Kissed the Girl" by Katy Perry. I was like, oh, for real? And he goes, no. And I was like, oh, so like you, you actually think it's lame that we do like, Kiss from the Rose, but the joke's <laughs> on you because I think you're lame for not doing Katy Perry. Right, <laughs> agree. We're, we're doing Katy Perry next. We got I to do Katy Perry next. Well, I don't know him. if you guys have heard of him, but his name's Jonathan Young. He does a lot of different yes. covers of bands. He's excellent. When he covered Barbie Girl, I lost it. I I love this. I loved Aqua's version when it came out. When he did Aqua, when he did the Barbie Girl version metal, I was like. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> finally, I there have a go. theme song now. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, I, I think Kiss of, uh, from the Rose works perfectly right next to Dig Your Grave because they yeah. sound so yes. alike, yeah. you know? So, you know, uh, so yeah, so that's our little segue into the album that these guys have out. Uh, perfect City. Uh, they, I try. Sometimes I'm a little <laughs> professional. Just a yeah, tinge. It, it leaks out every once in a while. Uh, Perfect City Built to Burn is the name of the album. This is a really cool album. I can see why. Yeah, it, it really is. Yeah, I can see why you guys are in the position of what we're going to talk about next. And, and, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not surprised when you're in that position because listening to this album, I'm like, damn, that's good. That's a really good, good, strong album. And, and, and people that follow me on this show and, and my other show that I do, they know that I love albums that kind of, what I call, grab you by the balls instantly. For, I, I love when that first song is yoink, you know, and, and that's what this does. And I'm like, that's great. That's how you do an album. I, I, I it love is. it. And it wasn't just one song that did it. It was mm -hmm. every one of them has something that has a hook that you're just like, oh, mm -hmm. oh, well then. Yeah. That's yeah. how it's going to be. Well, I think like credit for all of that. <laughs> a white man would. Strange how like what he wrote, but, but you know, it, it was all. I, I, yeah, it was. I love it. I I I think it's it's interesting too because it's not just one kind of genre. You know what I mean? There, there's different sounds, and you've got some 
keyboarding sounds in there and it lights a couple that are light at first and then they come out and, and, and rip into you. And I just love those, what I call curve balls. I, I love albums that have curve balls in them at all. So, um, yeah, but I think it, it's really, really an, ex an excellent album. Uh, who, who did the lyrics? Who did the music? How'd you guys do that to create this masterpiece? Um, I write the lyrics. He writes primarily uh, everything else. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So, and to add to that, what I was saying earlier about the other members, like adding their thumbprint, like a lot of the process works, like I'll come up with like a riff or he'll, you know, some of the songs they were written in like, you know, in what I'll call like you know, regular order and then in reverse order. So mm -hmm. for instance, at what my regular order as a musician would be like, I write the song and then I give him an instrumental and then it gets back to me and I give it to the other guys and I say, hey, here's the vision that I had for the instruments, but I'm not a drummer and uh, you're not, I, I'm not the bass player. Like I want them to add their flavor. So what ends up happening when it gets to them is that it kind of, um, it's like they add the spice, you know? Okay. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it's also, it's, it is like integral because um, the, for instance, the drums on Shadow and the Light, I had, you know, a particular thing that we ended up releasing that song. You can hear it on YouTube with the drums that I had written. And then the drums that made it to the EP after we got a drummer, um, they're just like so much better. They're so much more exciting, yeah. so much higher energy. And like, there's just a lot of love put into the thought, like just... He, he really wanted to make a great like drum song and the guitar work is great. The drums are great. The vocals are great. And the only way that happens is if you give everyone the freedom to just like make it all their own, you know? So oh. when it's like, it comes out of me first and then he puts his thing on it and then it goes back to them. And then it's like, uh, that's kind of the assembly line. Sometimes he'll call me and he'll go, Hey, I got this idea. I want it to be like, you know, a uh, kind of haunted house kind of feeling mm -hmm. thing, or I want it to feel like this. And I go, I've got this sleep, my sweet, don't say a word. And I go like, stop, stop, stop. I got to go. And then, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll pull up this keyboard, you know, and then we'll, we'll work it out. And then I kick it to him. And so, so sometimes he tells me yeah. where he's going. Yeah. They're like, like that song, Jennifer's body. That was something like, I'll have this idea for a song about like this ghost that haunted me as a child. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I want to write this entire song about, it. I want to have like very, dark haunted housey vibe like, I got it I gotta call you because I can't do it I can't write it I don't know the shit it's all you I'm just gonna I'm gonna sing to you you want to figure it out where I want to go and then there's songs like yeah. uh, Dig Your Grave where mm -hmm. I'm just like we need a song that's just unapologetically pissy yeah because like we have a lot of songs that are kind of different but I'm like no, no we need just balls to the wall freaking angry we need the circle pit yeah. song we need the circle pit song yeah. that is where yeah. we just you start that was like the first time like we got in a room to like really write it kind of together and so like he's working on guitar riffs and i'm writing lyrics on my phone he's like i hate that i'm like yeah yeah we had we had an entire dig your grave written and then i i called him one day and i was like i don't like it bro i think i want to rewrite this and so we scrapped the entire song and started over and mm -hmm. it sounds it sounds nothing like the original one but um it's right. far better it, it turned out much better for just Absolutely. for feeling that that comfort of being like we can do better. We can do better. And and that's something I talked to my, the other guys, you know, who, who aren't here right now, they're, they're dropping furniture off at the next place. Mm -hmm. But they, um, when we, when we get them writing and they start kicking us ideas, I go like, you know, beef it up. Like you can do better. Like we, we have confidence in enough, enough in one another that like, we can also like bring out our best selves and challenge each other. To that, like, that is incredibly important, especially when you're just starting out. If yeah. your band doesn't have that kind of bond, you're not going to go anywhere. And I've seen that um, just here recently. If if you have bandmates that aren't bandmates, it ain't gonna work. Well, yeah, and you, you gotta you gotta think about the perspective, the, like the idea of quote you can do better comes from. It's not. I'm not saying like you suck. I'm saying like right. dude, you're you're so good, and like you're undercutting yourself right now. And so like every time I right. see you're like I think they're great. I think they're amazing. They're the best bass player and drummer in the state. And like when when they kick me something and I go, I, I think, you, I think you could do better. That, I'm not, I'm saying it with compassion and like, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. 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 When I wrote the yeah. lyrics yeah. playing God, he was, everyone was like, nah. Yeah, exactly. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't good, dude. I'm like, come on, man. I was trying something really different. I'm like, okay, so you just want me to do the thing that you all expect me to do? They're like, yeah, I'm like, fine. I'm going to do it. But I'm going to go harder. Yeah. What man. you think is your number one best. It, they're like, nah, we've seen and heard better. You can do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do like bands that, 
that do like you just like you say you guys do everybody's got some say yep. in every song and that's how you keep a band together i've seen so many bands just implode yeah. because one member thinks he's better than the rest and i'm like oh uh, yeah i've been yeah ego i've been in bands like that it. and yep it's it's, it's, rough. it's uh it's definitely very de democratic and egalitarian and like i i will uh run a lot of the social media stuff but i mm -hmm. kick it to them every day and i i'm always looking for them to veto or say you know thumbs up just post it get it out there keep keep us in the zeitgeist mm -hmm. but like you know they all they all get a say before i post it every day on the caption right. on the content and then um we also vote on shows and like we've played shows where it was like hey three guys said yes and one guy said no fuck you we're gonna we're gonna do it hey well rules, man yeah yeah it's so, a democracy not a dictatorship yeah yep. it is a democracy here there you go when and it I starts like to look more like a dictatorship and then it, then it starts just being fun um because you can't work with somebody that's gonna that has to have it all about them all eyes right. on them yeah and it does it takes a lot away from the band and it's like Okay, well, I guess it's my show and my my crew, I guess. And you see that all, even in bigger bands and stuff, and it's really destroyed them. Yeah, yeah it's so, like yeah, I always say. It's good to have the camaraderie and the friendship in there with it, plus the team building. It's a big deal. You have to team build. Yeah. And from what I can hear, you guys do that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> even yeah. if it is all yays and you got one nay, I mean, that's how it goes. We're helping right. the drummer move right now. We're, we're, in, his garage. Garage. we're in his empty garage. <laughs> like, yeah, we're in his current place, where, and they're moving to his next place, and that's all part of being a band yeah. and, and team building. It's yep. just a yeah. big guys, big no. barrier between you, four no. days. No. You're not. You're not in a garage. You're. You're in this major studio you're building right now. That's right. This is this yeah. natural reverb. They're yeah. looking exactly for this on our next album. Actually, yeah. yeah. They don't actually but, move, but we're going to skip the garage. There you go. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. But you know what? I was what? about yeah. to say, uh, villains in vain does garage days. There you yeah, go. Yes. I like that. Yes, yes. And, and, and what we were talking about before, I'm always reminded of the phrase: you can't spell dictator without dick. <laughs> So remember that. There's my philosophy of the day. All right, let's move. <laughs> let's move to the important, important, big time part of this conversation and, and why I want to make sure to get these guys on before it happened. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to shut up and let you guys talk about it. But you guys have got a humongous show coming up and I, I want to hear all about it. So please let us all know the, the, about this show because this is big. We are currently in a battle of the bands, the USA Metal Battle for Bakken this year. Uh, we've reached wow. all the way to the national finals in San Diego mm. at Brick by Brick, mm -hmm. May 13th. We have competed against many bands, many, many good bands, and now we got to take it all the way to San Diego, where if we win, we win a spot in Germany for Bakken, where we can basically open up for Iron Man, which sounds, sounds pretty freaking fantastic. No. <laughs> I, know, I know it's going to be a Thursday. No. I, know, yeah. I know it's going to be a Thursday, but I'm going to be playing in the same general area right. as Iron Man. If we win. Iron who? Iron, Iron <laughs> who are you talking about? I don't know who. Yeah. <laughs> no, no one knows. No one cares. Yeah. They just started, didn't they? Iron Maiden, that's a new band, right? Yeah, They've yeah. been around yeah, they came out like last year. two or three years. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're, you're giving them a help out. That's there you is. go. Yeah. There you yeah. go. I like gotta, that. Got to prop like up that. the little guys. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so so yeah, we're playing this Bakken metal battle. Um, we're in the USA national final to effectively be the U.S. Confederate in Bakken this year. If you win, you are sent to represent the fucking red, white, and blue, baby. And uh, and I guess many, many nations in the world do it. I think there's like a band that's sent from India, and there's a band sent from Great Britain. I think it's like Cuba. Yeah, there's like, oh. there's... There's a lot of, I, there might be like many on our particular day, there might be like many national, you know, be, people who are sponsored to, to go out there and, and represent their country at Bakken, which right. would be like pretty dope to, you know, just kind of, you know, rub elbows with people from all over the world and like, you know, metalheads that, you know, I don't know, it just, it, it sounds like a dream come true, you know? It, um, even just the fact of getting to the national, and of course it's all Dutch based, yeah. so we all get score on how well we form our our lyrics or everything just is all just gone through a fine tooth comb mm -hmm. and to make it to nationals like as a band that's been playing live shows for just about a year and a half wow. it feels insane yeah oh it's, sure yeah it's definitely taken off it's accelerated at a pace that we couldn't have expected no. and you know we we have like a realistic perspective on it that like uh it is a huge title and we are going down there to win it but mm -hmm. um 
you know, the odds are probably far against us. The bands that we've been watching coming from all over the country in New Jersey and Salt Lake City, Texas, these bands are like insanely good. And we, um, we happen to think we're the best of them. Like we're going to go down there and they're all just going to be like, oh shit, it's Villains in Vain. Yeah, like let's go. But, they're already uh, fanboys. They're going to be like, hey, can we get your autograph? And you're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, we're going down there with the confidence like you walk into the ring of the title fight. And like, you know, uh, but there's going to be a lot of great bands. And anything can happen, right? Like we could have a, a catastrophic meltdown with our gear. You know, we could something could go wrong. And, um, and, and, you know, everything could go right and we could still lose. You know, it's highly okay. subjective. There is like a judging component. Um, but as DJ said, just the process of playing these like regional shows, the preliminary show, getting to the national has put a spotlight on us that we feel, um, grateful for. It's like really accelerated us, put downward pressure on us to get like our ducks in a row. I just bought a van yesterday and, um, you know, that's a seminal moment in every band to have your own van. Sure. And, yes. um, yeah. So like we are, wh whether or not we win, uh, we're grateful that like we've just been involved in the process and like it's put it's put more pressure on us to be a better band and like to put establish ourselves in like an ilk of bands that um you know we don't want to be opening for you know local you know garage bands forever we want to be perceived as though we're like you know we want to be perceived as though we're the best in the state and right mm -hmm. now we're the best in the pacific northwest going to Vox and represent that so yeah. my understanding we're like yeah. the second band from oregon to ever make it to nationals yeah and wow. From like, okay. Like for me, somebody grew up in like a small town. My graduating class was like seventy eight. Mm -hmm. You can get that far. Always saying, "Hey, I want to be a musician. I want to go to a world and just write music." I'm like, "Well, right. God, this feels freaking amazing." Yeah. Yeah. And you, it, you know, you guys have got to keep your heads up because to make it this far, that's a victory in itself. I think. You know, I mean, don't hold your head down at all. Cause that's I hope, amazing. I, hope I didn't sound too pessimistic. No, yeah, I, no, 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 like I said, like I said, you're going to fight for this spot. It, it's yeah. both. Yeah, it's both all the time. Like I said, we're going down there to win it. And um, Good. you know, we, I, I'm super excited to just play there because I'm originally from San Diego. I've played brick by brick before, and mm -hmm. um, we we actually have been in discussions with the promoter allowed to sell presales, and like we already have 50 presales sold. Just and the, nice. the, venue, the venue cap is only 400, so like nice. we're gonna bring we're gonna we're gonna be you know controlling a lot of the atmosphere in that room, I think, and it's gonna be a fucking vill fest. Listen, well, you I, mean, you hear I can honestly say room. just by hearing your material and hearing. Hearing the sound, and it's it sounds really familiar to me. If I can even say it without, you know, and this is all coming from like in awe because the sound I wasn't expecting it. But you guys remind me of a lot of my younger days when I started getting into like seriously heavy metal. But you guys had coming from Oregon, I was expecting some grungeish stuff. You guys hit me just like the first time I hit bands like Monster Truck and even. Children, you know, children of Bodom, slightly. I mean, um, we, but yeah, when I first listened to your mu music, I had to wait. I had to go back and check and see who the hell I was listening to, because at first I thought it, it sounded. Um, oh, you have to forgive me. My nerves are getting to me. Yeah, this is my uh, favorite. Who do we sound like? Let's go. We <laughs> sound like ah, uh, my favorite. Hold they, on. We, they, they sound like my I've favorite band. Ah, uh, love my, that band. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Ah uh, and um, that one. Ah uh, and um, that yeah, the, the duo. No, uh, they, say, they um. have a sound that sounds a lot like um. Damn, I had it. Yeah, you're good. I've never heard of that band. Oh. Damn, I had it. That great name for a band. Well, she's thinking That's of that. That's my band. <laughs> well, while, while, while Andrea's thinking of that, real quick, I want to ask you a question because we're just about out of time. How many bands are you going to be battling against? I in think five. Five. We are six of six. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I was just curious about that. I was like, how many, how many bands are going to be duking it out with? So, all right. So May 13th, May 13th. Yeah. is the big night when you guys are going to go to Bakken. That's fantastic. I, I just, you know, like I said earlier, hold your heads up high because that is just, uh, yeah, good job. Good job, Cameron. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so proud of my little Cameron. My little Cameron's growing up both so fast. Stop that. But he, anyway. He has a lot to be proud of. Definitely. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, next time we talk is, is, is when we're going to, we'll discuss your travel plans to Germany. 
and ah, uh, yes. you know, you know, and we'll talk about that. But I want to get this out there. I want to get people to listen to you guys. And, and, and I think you know, they, they, you should be getting li- more listeners because you're representing not just the West Coast. No, you're like you said, you're representing America now, and, okay. and you guys need to be heard. And the album is amazing, as I said, and and we're going to push that too. And we're going to promote it on the graveyard, uh, Gargoyle's graveyard page, and uh, per- my personal page, and, and we will push as hard as we can, and uh, get the word out there, get the get the music out there, shall we say? Uh, and and, and on my socials as well, I'll go ahead and share their material and everything I can. I I have two pages, so I'll do it on my main, and I'll do it on my on my um on my professional one. So I'll throw that out there for them as well. There you go. Yep. I have I have a really cool audience, so they'll, they'll really enjoy the music. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And we are behind you 110 percent, and we know you guys are going to do great. No fear whatsoever. And uh, I know you guys are busy, so I really thank you for taking some time to talk to us and and let you know let us know what's going on and and to break Andrea in and and, and so she won't be so nervous anymore. So nah, you're good. Uh, yeah, I totally lost good. it when I couldn't remember Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of there God. we go. I was there thinking we go. Hit all these other bands I'm like not that one, not that. Why did I say that? And it's just like oh, dude. <laughs> I love it. But uh, best of luck to you guys. Hold your heads high. You're representing us well, and uh, yeah. I, I, I just, I'm just excited for you guys, and, and I'm really glad we got to talk before the show, and, uh, and we will be with you in spirit, trust me. And thank you, uh, and thank we you will for promote doing this with you. us. Oh, thank you. The honor is ours, and uh, thank you guys again. Appreciate it, Andrea. Thank you. Good job for your first show. Well done, and thank all of I you tried. out there. Yeah, you did good. Uh, as I say on my other show, and all, and we talk about the numbers are still going up which is scary because my face is on it. But for some reason, the numbers are going up. I don't know why. Because uh, you but, deserve it all, man. Oh, is that what it is? That's oh, okay. Because I'm so classy, you know. Don't be scared. Anyway, if the no. numbers are going up, people love you. Like, That's it. It is exci- It's scary, it's exciting, <laughs> but people like you. Don't be scared. Okay, that's it. There we go. I love it. So uh, thanks, everybody, everybody, again for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll have a new show for you next week. Who it's going to be? Uh, I can tell you, but I don't want to. We're going to hold quiet on that. You have to come. You have to listen. Ah, 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 ah. So, guys, thanks again. Really appreciate it. We wish the best for you. And everybody, thanks again for watching. Everybody take care. We love you guys. Thanks so much. Keep rocking. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.